Sweden is an expensive country to visit, and Stockholm is the most expensive city in Sweden. This is a problem if you're broke when visiting the capital of Sweden, or just a cheap bastard. Don't worry, I'm here to help. This is the list of the top 10 things to do in Stockholm that are completely free. Östermalmshallen is a food market quite unlike any others you've seen. The exterior is a red tile building that doesn't really look all that inviting, but as soon as you step inside, you're transported to something extraordinary. It's not exactly the biggest food hall in the world, but the architecture is absolutely gorgeous, and there's a great selection of local meats and produce. Wanna try an elk sausage, or bear meat, or reindeer? You can find everything here. This place is well worth a visit. Even if you're completely broke, you can stroll around and enjoy the architecture and look at delicacies from all over Stockholm. Longholmen is an island in Stockholm that literally means Long Island. People lived here as early as 900 AD, and this is also the island where King Gustav Vasa placed his troops before taking the city in 1523. Longholmen was also used as a toll station, with uh, lots of fast ships stationed here. Those ships were used to catch up with boats who forgot to pay the toll when coming into the city. But most importantly, between 1724 and 1975, this was a prison island. You can visit a museum here to learn more about the fascinating history behind this place. However, entering the museum costs a whopping 25 Swedish crowns, that's like 2.5 euros or 3 American dollars. It's not much, but it's not free, so I'm not including it in this list. There's a popular public beach here as well. It's uh, not much, but then again Stockholm isn't exactly famous for its sandy beaches, right? Come to Stockholm, the famous beach town! No, not really. Oh, and prude Americans, beware, there might be some topless sunbathing here. Welcome to Sweden! Longholmen is also great for catching up with nature. It's a green oasis in the middle of Stockholm, perfect for when you want to get away from the hectic city pulse. Also, check out the Jaws Memorial. During the Water Festival 1993, a Jaws 39 Gripen fighter jet crashed here during an exhibition. By some miracle, no one actually died in that crash, but uh, there have been no more fighter jet exhibitions over the city since that day. Let me introduce you to the Swedish Parliament. Hello, Parliament! It's located right next to the Royal Palace, and right next to Old Town, and right next to the Medieval Museum as well, actually. It's a beautiful place with a great view of the surrounding islands and the water, but you can do more than just take nice photos and enjoy the view here. In the spirit of democracy and transparency, you can visit all the open sessions at Parliament. Feel the wings of democracy as you listen to riveting debates, such as what is the acceptable angle of a cucumber when exporting produce to the EU. Okay, maybe the debates aren't always interesting, but it's completely free. Kungsträdgården, the King's Garden, is a great place. There's always something happening here. In winter, this place is filled with snow and lights, and there's a lot of winter activities. The sand run starts from this place, and that's a completely bonkers race that you should not miss. There's also an ice skating rink, and you can rent ice skates, so you can fall on your ass and embarrass yourself in front of all your friends. In spring, this place starts to fill up with people emerging from the winter darkness. The park benches fill up with people young and old, and it's especially popular during cherry blossom season. This place becomes completely overrun by tourists and Instagrammers taking photos then. In summer, you can attend mini festivals and different types of live music events here. And you can try various foods at food truck events as well. And finally, in autumn, there's nothing. Autumn sucks. Nah, it's not that bad. The illustrious TGI Fridays is always open, for example. The food is just okay, the drinks are just decent, but the location is excellent. And at Halloween, they dress up the place really well. Enjoying the lovely Kungsträdgården is always a pleasure, and it's always free. By the way, Apple wanted to open a store right here, but the Stockholm city planners said no. We don't want no stinking Apple store polluting our Kungsträdgården. 
There's a lot of things to see at the island of Djurgården. In the 1500s this was a park filled with deer and moose and reindeer, but in the 1700s it was transformed into a posh place for nobility. Rosendal Castle was built in the 1820s and there's a lovely walk along the water to get to this place. The castle itself was a recreational palace, basically a short stay castle for the king, but it now serves as a museum since 1913 and it's completely free to visit. But if you don't want to look at old castles, you can walk over to the nearby Rosendal Garden instead. There's a lot of plants and greenery to be seen here, and if you do have some money, you can buy some plants or a beer. Mmm, beer. But if you're broke, you can just walk around and enjoy the views. And speaking of views, another place to visit at Djurgården is Valdemars Udde. It's a picturesque spot where you can enjoy seaside views and relax in the sun. Valdemars Udde was especially beloved by Prince Eugen, who was actually a pretty famous artist. An art gallery there is named after him, but that costs money, so I'm not including it in this list. Number five. The Stockholm Subway is the longest art gallery in the world, and it's completely free. Or, well, technically, you do have to buy a subway ticket, but uh, you have to get around Stockholm anyway somehow. So if you have a ticket, then it's free. I actually have a full video about the Stockholm Subway art, so go check that one out after you watch this video. But let me show you some highlights right now. This island is called Skeppsholmen, which means ship's island. So can you guess what you can find here? Museums, of course. That makes perfect sense, right? Here you can find, for example, the Museum of Modern Art and the Museum of Architecture and Design. And both are completely free to visit. Personally, I think that modern art is an abomination, but some people like that kind of thing. If you have that kind of perversions, please feel free to visit the museums. And while you're at it, you can check out the colorful sculptures outside the museum. They uh, frighten me a little bit, but uh, maybe you'll enjoy them a little bit more than I do. Nope, not gonna comment on that one. But there are actually ships on the ship's island as well. This beautiful beast is called Af Schapman, and it's actually a hostel. So if you fancy sleeping on a boat in central Stockholm, this is the place to go. But then again, this isn't free, so I'm not counting it in this list. Oh well. And there are many other boats as well. I highly recommend that you take a walk around the place and explore everything you can find on this beautiful little island. Drottningholm means the Queen's Island, and it got its name in the 1500s, when King Johan III built a house here for his wife Katharina. The castle was built between 1662 and 1750, and it's actually the official residence of the King and Queen of Sweden. Who's that leaving? Could it be the King in disguise? No, it's not. <laughs> This is one of Sweden's best preserved castles, and it represents a time when Sweden had grand ambitions for taking over big chunks of Europe. In the Great Power Era, Sweden was pretty much a big thing, but now we're just known for ABBA, IKEA and the Swedish chef in the Muppets. In the summer, you can attend guided tours of the castle, and guess what? Those are completely free. But even if the castle isn't open, you can still marvel at the exterior and enjoy the lovely castle park. Drottningholm is a lovely place. There's a lot to see and do here. I highly recommend a visit, especially in summer, but it's good any time of year. This place has a pretty interesting history. Today it's the medieval museum, but it almost ended up as a parking lot. In the late 70s, the city wanted to build parking spots underneath the parliament buildings. Excavation started, but they found tons of archaeological findings, so they built a museum instead. The museum opened in 1986, and it was an instant success. It actually won the European Museum of the Year award that year. It continues to be very popular, and best of all, it's completely free. It's located smack in the middle of central Stockholm, so it's really easy to get to. And it's really interesting because it gives an insight into life in medieval Sweden. So basically, you have no excuse not to come here. 
Before I reveal the top three thing to do in Stockholm, let me mention some run-ups. Stockholm has some lovely architecture, and some of the houses are truly spectacular, like the Nordic Museum or City Hall. But you will see those buildings anyway when walking around in Stockholm, so it doesn't deserve a spot in this list. Montelius-Vägen on the island of Södermalm is a lovely viewpoint, and you can see the city in all its splendor from up there. But it's not a top 10 choice in my view. Still, go there, it's actually really nice. There are many parks in Stockholm as well, and those are great on warm summer days. But I can't really include that in a top 10 list, because it's very seasonal and very weather dependent. Anyway, let's move on to the top spot. Stockholm Old Town is awesome. I love this place, and there are lots of things you can do for free here. For example, you can check out the changing of the guard at the Royal Palace. I love stuff like that. Oh, and uh, when you're there, check out the Armory Museum as well. It's free. It's not big, but it's free. Or you can visit the narrowest alley in Old Town, Morten Trotsig's Grand. Just uh, beware of all the graffiti. Bloody kids ruining the place. You can also find Sweden's smallest public monument here. A statue, 15 centimeters tall, called Jan Poike, the Iron Boy. And last, and well, actually least as well, this is Sweden's oldest public toilet. It was installed in 1890, and it's still in use today. I was gonna make a joke about how you can tell that it's still in use from the smell, but it's actually freshly clean, so... Oh well, so much for that joke. Well, that's about it for this little list of the top 10 completely free things to do in Stockholm. Leave a comment if you like it. Actually, leave a comment if you hate it as well. Either way, like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day.